today we're learning about PowerPoint. And I've had quite a few questions this past uh, couple of weeks about how to do some advanced editing in PowerPoint. And I thought I would take this uh, hour training and show some of those advanced features uh, to you, as well as some introduction level things as well. I know that there are many faculty and staff as well that use PowerPoint and they use it for a variety of reasons. Some may use it to lecture from. Uh, some faculty I've seen record audio over the top of their slides and upload their PowerPoints as a uh, video, which can be done. Um, other faculty will use it as a study guide, a study review. Uh, and if you haven't seen some presentations, uh, some faculty are actually using them as a game show. And here's an example of a PowerPoint game show where as you play this, and if your students online, if you have online students, they can play this as well. They would choose a category and then click to get a question to come internet browsers worth $100. They would click again and they would get a, a response and then they could select the home button up at the top to take them back uh, to the home slide. So this is a different way that you can present your PowerPoint presentations. A little more interactive probably than some more of just the standard um, PowerPoints that you have seen. I'm going to close out of this one and come back to this blank one again. If you're looking for some extra resources in PowerPoint, I particularly enjoy Dusty Howell. He has a book on Amazon called Using PowerPoint in the Classroom. Um, he and uh, Dr. Childress and his wife Diane Howell um, are all professors at Emporia State and his books are exceptional and fairly affordable as well, $24 for that textbook. He also has a website that you can go to, it's uh, DustyHowell.com and you can go and look at some of his other uh, textbooks that he has as well as a, a very neat blog that he's talking about PowerPoint and the use of PowerPoint. Uh, one of the comments that he, Dusty Howell, Dr. Howell made to me several years ago on PowerPoint was that PowerPoint doesn't kill meetings but people kill meetings. Uh, however, using PowerPoint is like having an AK-47 on the table and that is true. We've all sat through those PowerPoint presentations where um, someone is reading off of the entire slide instead of presenting the highlighted areas. There's one rule to PowerPoint and it's called the 4x4 four four rule. It's an important rule to remember uh, and an easy one. Uh, what that means is no more than uh, four sentences per slide and also they try to keep the limited to four words per sentence or four, four words per line. Uh, very simple a rule to follow by and, and it's just reminding us not to post our entire chapter onto a slide, however just posting some of the highlights. So those are just some general information things. If you want to learn more about how to use PowerPoint in the classroom, I encourage you to check out uh, Professor Howell, uh, Dr. Dusty Howell's textbooks. Before we get started, I've got PowerPoint open and mine may look just a little bit different than some of your uh, PowerPoint views. First of all, note that I do have the developer toolbar launched and I indicated how to um, get the developer tab in the future, in the, excuse me, in the past trainings that we've done. If you don't remember, it is under the file menu. You go down to options and then under the customized ribbon, make sure that the developer bar is checked and that will place the developer ribbon um, up at stairs for you as well. You'll also notice that other than the standard ribbons, I have this small ribbon right here. And this is just the uh, quick access ribbon. Sometimes you'll see it displayed at the very top. Uh, in PowerPoint, I like to display mine directly underneath the uh, ribbon bar. There's a drop down here that you can select to show above the ribbon. So this is how it would look if it were um, above. And then this is how it would look below. And if you want to customize your ribbon, you certainly can do so. You just choose the drop down menu and select more commands. And then you can add whatever you'd like on this little ribbon. Um, I like to group mine first over on the left hand side down to alignment, font. Then I like uh, the photo um, editor. 
And then lastly, the selection pane, which I hope everyone uses. If not, I'll show you how to use that tonight. So just some general basics about where the, the tools are. Uh, also, if you're not familiar with hotkeys, uh, PowerPoint has um, an outstanding uh, shortcut for hotkeys. And hotkeys are found, as you know, in all of the Microsoft Office products. But if you are struggling with uh, shortcuts, um, you can always click on the Alt key on your keyboard anytime. Just press it down one time. And then you'll see all these little pop-ups appear up here at the very top. Basically, wherever you see a number or a letter, that's the shortcut for that. So once you press Alt, you will see all these individual letters. So if you wanted to uh, create a new slide, for example, the hotkey for that is N. So then you could simply press the N, and that would bring up the insert so you could go in and create a new slide. Uh, anytime that that goes away, just hit Alt again, and you can see some of the um, other keys. Here you've got bullets and numbering and your font, and then all of your quick access have a uh, key with them as well. So hotkeys are, are fun, and you can um, open those up on any ribbon. No matter what ribbon I'm on, if I just press the Alt key, that'll show me what the shortcuts are uh, for each of those. So I didn't know if you had used hotkeys before, but there you can find those in any Office application program, and it's a quick way to use the keyboard only instead of using your mouse. All right, one of the uh, items I wanted to share tonight was how to do a master view, and then we'll move into um, layers and stacking order, which I think are very popular and uh, should be reviewed. So when you do a, a presentation, often you'll want your name somewhere on this, and you'll want to apply it to every slide. And there is a layout feature up at the top under the Home ribbon. It's called Layout. And if you click on the little drop down there, it shows you all of the styles that you can have on a slide. There's the title slide. You can have title and content, section header. You can read all of them here. There's title only. So if you select one of these layout styles, it puts a placeholder of where text should be. And it has you click in those placeholders, and then you can type. Um, unfortunately, the layouts that are provided here uh, have been overused a million different times in a million different ways. So you can make your own layout styles and apply a master theme to it. So that's what I'd like to share with you tonight. First I'm going to select the uh, title slide and I'm going to uh, pretend we're doing here a um, PowerPoint for an environmental science class. Environmental Science, Chapter 1. And I'm just going to highlight all, all of this and bring it down a step so it fits on one line, which I can fix in the master view, and I'll show you how in just a moment. And then I'm going to put my name as the professor. On a side note, I could never teach this class in a million years. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be my lecture for Environmental Science. And I want to modify this title slide so the next time I create a chapter heading, I won't need to um, recreate it uh, every single time. So I'm going to go up to the View menu, up to View. And you have several types of views that are shown on the left. We have the normal view. There's a slide sorter, which is going to show you all of the thumbnails of a PowerPoint presentation you would have. The notes page. Uh, the notes is where you can add additional lecture notes or maybe some pop questions you're going to ask your students. You can choose to print just the notes or you can um, also choose to share just the notes with your students. There's a reading view which is full screen. And then you'll see the three in the middle here. This is called Slide Master, Handout Master, and Notes Master. These are the three areas under Master Views that we're going to pay close attention to tonight. I'm going to go ahead and select the Slide Master. Now I'm going to move myself over here. I want you to take note of all of the different types of layout styles that are provided to you. If you look on the left, it has them all etched out for you. These are all the same styles that were found under the Home um, Layout drop-down menu. They're just now applied over on the left. 
Remember, when you're in the master view, you're not able to actually type content on here uh, and keep it for a presentation. The only thing that we're doing in the master view is changing the layout of the style. So you can see that whatever slide that I was on previously, which was the title slide, when we go to the master slide view, it has this one set as default because that's the layout that I had selected previously. So here I am on the master title style. And now I can select this placeholder and maybe I wanted that font to be smaller. So up here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and decrease the size of that font down to size 36. I'm also going to choose a different font style. And my font of the month, I'm sure you all have fonts of the month. Mine is Palantino Linotype, so I'm going to select that. And I'm going to make the bottom one match. And I think what I'll do is just use the Format Painter. I've got it selected. I'm going to double click on the paintbrush and then click down here at the bottom so it matches. And I'll hit Escape to get rid of it. Now I'm going to select the subtitle and make it a little smaller font size. But the font is going to be the same. So I have Palantino on both of these. The next thing I see down at the bottom is the footer. And I really don't need the footer on my slides. So I'm going to select each of these placeholders and delete them. Now, if I wanted an image to appear, I could easily go upstairs and choose the Insert menu. I'm going to find an image that I might be able to use. Oh, let's see, Science. Do a quick search. And um, I'm sure you know this, but over on the right-hand side when you're searching for a graphic, you can tell it if you want just a photograph or if you want an illustration. And if you just select one, it sure makes the speed up time go a lot faster for you. So here I've got this nice little microscope. I'm going to select it over here. All right, so that looks pretty good. I think I'm, I think I'm ready to go. I could go ahead and apply more color schemes to this and a different background if I wanted to. They have tons of background styles that you can apply that would be really clean. Uh, you could go ahead and, and apply one if you'd like. And remember, everything that you can do in the other Office applications, you can do in PowerPoint. There's an insert menu as well, so you could do some word art if you wanted to. But you could jazz up your slide however you'd like. And once you have it completed, I'm going to go to View. Now remember, we're just working with the title only layout. So I've got the slide master view. I'm going to go back to normal. All right, now you'll see that my slide has Environmental Science Chapter 1, and you'll also notice that my name is underneath it. I'm going to go ahead and decrease this even more. should have went a little smaller on that, but I can go back to the master view. Now, what you can't do on this slide is I can't click on this microscope, and I can't change the background because it's locked. It's locked into that master view. In fact, every time I go up to New Slide, you'll notice that my title slide has the microscope with the blue background on it. So if I choose it again, it's going to continue that pattern for me throughout the entire presentation. So you can alter every layout style in your PowerPoint presentation, and it will apply to every style throughout. Now, if I were to change the layout to maybe blank, of course, that layout has not been modified. So you'd want to choose it back to title to get the color. So think about the possibilities with that. I don't know if any of you have used the um, um, master slide view before, but if not, I hopefully that was a quick trick and that can help you in future development. Uh, using the master slide view is really the way to go and you can uh, customize it to however you're liking. All right, I'm going to insert a blank slide. We're going to go with a blank theme now. And often what I'm finding that faculty have is quite a bit of text from a chapter. So I'm going to insert a text box, and this is how I'm seeing them do it. They are um, have a, a pretty large text box. And let me grab some uh, text here online that I can find real quick. 
I'm just pulling up some blanket text that I can throw into my text box without taking too much time and having to come up with um, some verbiage here. But what I'm seeing that faculty are doing is they are uh, typing in uh, their text into their PowerPoint slides and sometimes they're copying and pasting it from Word, which is fine. But remember, you don't want to include so much text where students are having to read it. So you might want to include bullets and numbering instead of um, uh, paragraph form text. So in fact, I even think that this is probably too much font, or too much text for one slide. But you could position it however you'd like on the slide. And then if you wanted to do your bullets and numbering, you could do that as well. I mean, you can format this just like um, regular Microsoft Word, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Let me go ahead and add a title to this. I'm going to go back to Insert, and we'll just do a simple word art here at the top. You can see as I get multiple things on the slide, it can get a little messy. Maybe um, if you want to go back and add another photo here, photos. You see how I'm having to drag things and drop them. And the more I get, the more messy it's going to be. And I'm just going to click and drag a couple of more items on here. The most pictures I've seen uh, faculty use have been about 25 photos on one slide. That's quite a few. I would limit it down to, le to less than six. All right, so you can see I've got all these images on here. And as you start getting all of these images, it really makes it difficult to know, um, you know, where, how do I position this to the back, and can my text be brought forward. Uh, there's a, a lovely um, task pane that you can open that will help you rearrange all of your graphics on the page. And that can be found under the Home ribbon. If you select Home, and then you'll notice that there is an Arrange button over on the right hand side. You have the same features like bring to front, send to back, and so forth, but at the very bottom they have an item called selection pane, and I'm going to select that. If you've never worked with the selection and visibility pane, I encourage you to do so. It will save your life so many times. This, if, this is very much similar to uh, Adobe Photoshop or InDesign. It mirrors the layering concept where the text box you see at the very bottom, it's underneath. It's the underneath layer. Think of an onion. You're peeling it back. So the text box is in the middle, and then everything else is kind of building upon it. There's even a little eyeball to the right in each of your layers. So let's say you didn't want to display this photo. You could click on the little eyeball beside picture. You're not deleting it. You're just hiding it. So maybe it's for a different class. Have you ever had to delete something and then have to go back and reinsert it? This is a way you don't have to delete. You can just put the little eyeball indicator on or off and tell it to hide or show. You can also reorder them. So you'll notice how this image up here at the top is on top of my text. And if I want it underneath it, I would just simply uh, move this picture underneath my text box. And at the bottom, there's a reorder menu. So I'm going to select the down button and you'll see that it moves behind the font. Now, it's kind of hard to see because the text is black. So I'll show you a little trick that you can do uh, under the format, under Picture Tools. There's an option uh, to recolorize it. So you can go through and create a washout look if you want. And you can see that it's clearly behind the text box. This is called the Selection and Visibility pane. And I normally have this pane up 100% of the time when I'm working in uh, PowerPoint. It's real easy just to go ahead and take these off. And you can say, oh, this is going to go online, so I'm going to reduce the pictures so it saves quicker. Uh, maybe you're just going to have these three items. So selection and visibility is uh, very important and very easy to use. All right, another question I get quite often is how to insert a YouTube video into PowerPoint. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure there aren't any questions. Uh, any questions from my audience? Jen, are you good? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm following pretty okay. good. Okay. Have you used that selection and visibility before? No, I have not. Good. So that's going to save you a lot of time uh, by selecting those eyeball visibilities. How about the master view? Have you used it before? Nope. Awesome. So two new <laughs> things, right? Yes. Very good. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a YouTube video. Have you have you inserted one of those before? I have not. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of steps involved in this, so you might want to write down the process because it's pretty involved. Uh, I wouldn't say really involved, but enough where you might want to write it down. I'm going to do a blank slide here. And before I choose a YouTube video, I wanted to show you or suggest to you that if you have a YouTube video you're using and it's very long in length and maybe you only want to show uh, just 30 seconds of it or maybe even a minute of it and it happens to be a 30 minute video, there's a great uh, resource out on the web called TubeChop, TubeChop.com. And what you do is you find the video that you want to use so here I've got the instructional design and uh, training video up and I would select this URL and I'm going to copy it control C. So then in TubeChop what you can do is paste the URL in their dialog box and select search and it's going to find the video instantly for you. And then at the bottom you have these lovely little, oops, let me mute that, you have these lovely little um, uh, slider so you can slide this into where you want to start it and where you want to stop it. So then you can shorten up your uh, video to maybe just one minute or 30 seconds or however it is and then when you get it done uh, and decide um, what part of the video you want to show you select chop it and after you select chop it it gives you a new link with the correct URL for that 30 second or one minute video that you were able to create. It's a great um, resource. It's called TubeChop. T-U-B-E-C-H-O-P. Alright, so let's say you have that URL and now you're ready to insert it into your PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to come back here actually and just delete this. I'm going to pretend I'm putting my uh, YouTube video right here on my definition slide. Okay, to do a YouTube video, you first need to open up your developer tab. That's step one. Open up your developer tab and locate the hammer and the wrench icon. It's going to be right above the controls. So once you select the hammer and wrench, what you're looking for in this box is called a shockwave flash object. So you're going to scroll down until you find shockwave flash object or press S, they're in alphabetical order. Shockwave flash object is what you want. That's step two. Next, you're going to draw on your slide where you want your YouTube uh, movie to play. So I'm just going to draw a box out on my screen like so. And you really can't see anything happen here. It's just um, looks like an envelope kind of that you drew out onto your slide. So after you've done that, that step three is to draw out your uh, property. You're going to right click on this and select properties. And you get quite a few um, tools that are available here. You have some in here that's called um, loop if you want it to play over and over and over again. Uh, you can really drive your students crazy, especially if you have the loop set to true and you don't have a menu. <laughs> that way they'll never be able to stop it. It'll just keep playing over again. I wouldn't advise you do that. You probably want to put loop on true, maybe menu true, and then you'll see an area called movie. And that's where you want to paste in the URL uh, to the video that you have copied. So put your cursor in there and then paste it in to the movie link. Now unfortunately we're not done yet. There's actually just a couple more steps that you'll need to remember. Because you are copying this from an outside source, 
we want them to be able to watch it inside of PowerPoint. In other words, we don't want them to click on the video and YouTube to open. We want the video to play right on the slide itself. So to do that, once you have pasted it in, the next step, step five, is to delete out the word watch and the question mark. Every URL of YouTube, if you, if you copy from the very top, will have the word watch and a question mark. Just delete that out, like so. The last step in this process is to take out the equal sign and replace it with a forward slash. So then you have youtube.com slash v slash. So you've taken out the watch and the question mark and you've replaced the equal sign with a slash. And that's it. So we'll close this out. Now you won't be able to see anything from this view. You actually have to go to the slideshow view in order to see your movie. So we'll go to slideshow and we'll choose from current slide so you can see how it works. And there is your movie. Okay? So then when you're ready to play it, you would hit the play and it's going to play right there in your presentation. So your student doesn't have to go outside of the PowerPoint to view a YouTube video. Now this works with any video. Uh, on Vimeo, you don't have to delete out the watch and the question mark, but on YouTube you do. If you have your own video, of course, you don't have to delete out the watch and the question mark and the equal sign. You just want to uh, paste the link into the properties box. Only on YouTube, you'd have to take those extra steps that are necessary. And you don't need to do it on TubeChop either. So there's a couple of shortcuts. But this is a, a neat way that you can um, put your videos directly into your slides without taking your students outside of that resource. So hopefully that was a good tip and hopefully that's something that you can start. While I'm in the slideshow view, just a couple of things, uh, shortcuts I'll show you. Um, if you're doing a face-to-face -face class and you're wanting to get your classmates' attention, you can press the B as in boy on your keyboard and that will blacken the screen. If you press B again, it will bring the screen back. You can also do the same thing with W. That will wipe out the screen. W will bring it back. At any time your mouse uh, gets lost or you can't find how to get yourself uh, around in the presentation, you can always use your keypad. So if you want to go back to slide number one, you would press one and enter. And that would take you right back to the beginning. You want to go to slide three, you would press three and enter, take you right back to that slide. So just a couple of shortcuts to help you navigate in PowerPoint. All right, let me go ahead and see if there's any questions and then we'll do some hyperlinking. Any questions on the video? No, I'm, I learned. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's the point, Jen. We hope that, um, you know, I hope that, that that's something that you can use. And if you need help putting it into action and doing it for real, let me know. Uh, sometimes we forget to take out the word watch and question mark. And if you haven't used TubeChop before, uh, it's really cool. Okay, let's do some hyperlinking. And then I'll show you how to paste as a picture. Okay, let's say here uh, on the very bottom of our screen, we want to take our students back to the first slide. We want to do an in-house hyperlink. So I'm going to add a little text box down here that's going to say click to return to home slide. Now when we think of hyperlinking, sometimes we don't often think about hyperlinking within the PowerPoint. Sometimes we only think about hyperlinking outside of the PowerPoint, but actually if you have a, a very large PowerPoint, and I learned today that a faculty member has a 200 uh, PowerPoint presentation that they use, that's a fairly, very large PowerPoint presentation. So you definitely want to have some, some hyperlinks that would take them and navigate throughout the presentation as they're viewing it. So this is one way to do that. I've got click to return to home slide. 
So I want to make a hyperlink out of this, so I'm going to select it by triple clicking so I have all of the text selected. I'm going to go up to the Insert menu and locate the hyperlink option, which is in the middle of the screen. Hyperlink. And then instead of just pasting a internet address, which I could, I could make a um, make them go to a website, maybe to the college home page. I can choose a place in this document instead. And by choosing a place in this document, I can send them to the first slide, the last slide. I also have slide titles. So I know I want to send them back to slide number one. That's what I'm going to select. And then I could choose OK. Notice the other options to hyperlink is to create a new document. So when they click here, they could make their own PowerPoint. Or when they click here, they could actually be sending an email back to you. And I encourage you to do this for your students. Uh, in all of my PowerPoint presentations at the very end, there's a link that says, please click here to evaluate this, this presentation. And it goes to my email address, and I have them type in their notes uh, actually in the email. So, you could do that, and that way you know that they have watched it, and they've opened it, and gone to the last slide. I can't guarantee that they've actually read every slide, but I can guarantee that they've uh, at least made it to the last slide in one way or another. So I'm going to choose a place in this document for this link, select Environmental Science, and choose OK. And now, if I go ahead and do an F5, by the way, is the shortcut to go to Slideshow View. If I go to slide three and I click on this hyperlink, it's going to automatically take me back to the home slide. So there are multiple ways that you can utilize the hyperlink tool. Uh, creating an in-house or an in-presentation hyperlink can be very effective if you have many, many, many slides. Also, think about cross-references too. If one of your slides is showing an image of something that was previously discussed, why not create a hyperlink that returns them to that slide that has the narrative about it? That's a good way to cross-reference yourself. Okay, one of the other elements I wanted to share this evening was how to paste as a picture. And let me show you what I mean. Here's a problem that uh, some have been having um, for a while, and there is a solution to it. I'd like to show you what it is. I'm going to insert a picture. Whoops, not a picture. Let's do a clip art. That would be easier. I don't know if I've got any good ones. I'm going to search for a woman and photographs only. So my search is speedy. This is a lovely woman. We'll take her. And I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and put it on my page. Now, if you wanted to add a shape on top of this photo, we would normally do that by going to Insert, and we would select a shape. Let's do a call out. Let's say she's talking to us here. And I'm going to insert this call out. I'm using my cursor keys to position it uh, about right, to, directly to the right of her. And in that call out, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to select Edit Text. And then I'm going to type in, hello. Now, these are separate images. This is a call out, a shape, and then this is a picture. And I want to group them together so they become one image. So I'm going to select those, this picture, and then hold down Shift, and go ahead and click on the call out. So they're both selected by holding down Shift. Then I want to group them together so I can move them as one. So then I'm going to right click and select group. This marries them. See, now I can move them together. The problem with grouping items is if you want to resize it, see how small your text gets. But what if you want to make it smaller? Look what happens to your text. It doesn't fit. And this is a problem that some have had in PowerPoint, in Word, and Excel, basically every Microsoft Office program out there. So once you have your grouping down, and if you don't want this kind of thing to happen where the text changes, it's almost like it's three or four separate images in there, it's grouped, 
but the computer doesn't recognize it as one item still. You can still move it, but you can't resize it. So instead, I'm going to copy it, which is Control C. And then instead of just pasting it, if you go to the Home tab, there is an option uh, called Paste at the very far left, and then you can paste Special. You can paste it uh, with the document theme, or you can paste it as a picture. That's what you want to select. When you paste it as a picture, it doesn't matter how small it gets, it still stays in ratio to one another. See how the font, the text changes along with the shape. So I can make this small, and then this one that just has been grouped, if I make it small, you see the font doesn't fit. So instead of doing a grouping, I would encourage you to paste items as a picture. That way you can move them around as one and they'll keep their um, respect to each other. So that's pasting as a picture. Questions over that? Are you good with that, Jen? Yeah, that makes perfect sense now. Yep, yep. Have you had that problem? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I try, kind of avoid grouping because it scares me. Yes, yeah, sometimes uh, when you group too much, you get all this, um, the problems with text. So just remember, you can group it then just copy it and paste it as a picture. You can do that for charts. You can do it for other elements that you bring in, uh, spreadsheets. Uh, but if you paste as a picture, you're able to format it differently. So very good. Okay, so we've got paste as a picture. While we're on the picture icon and talking about pictures, I want to visit just a brief minute about one little thing I'm seeing a lot of in presentations. And what I'm doing is finding an image here of, uh, that I can quickly use. Finding an image that has one of those lovely white backgrounds. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. If you've used a picture before, sometimes it'll have what I call the ugly white background curse. Okay, so here's a great example. As I bring this in, I can see that there's this ugly white background behind this thing. And it's so annoying when you put text around this, you have this ugly white background that's showing up. So you can fix that. You can take this background off really easy. Now, I see that I also have a white cup, so that may affect that. I'm not sure. We'll find out. So go ahead and select your picture. And under Format, there's the color box again that we were at just a few minutes ago, where this allows you to make a transparent image or you know, change your coloring however you want. Unfortunately, it doesn't get rid of this ugly white background. What you have to do is at the very bottom select the set transparent color. This means you click on a color in the picture that you don't want to see. So we're going to select that option and then we have this lovely little magic wand tool. And I'm going to click one time in the background of this picture because I want the white to go away. So I clicked one time and now it's a little fuzzy around the edges. But look, no more ugly white background. Brilliant! So now you can wrap your text around that and it won't look so bad um, as you are inserting these pictures in. Get rid of that white background. If you have it and you're bringing those in, it's just a one-click, non-stop shop. You select the color, you click the transparent color, and then you just click on the color that you don't want to see anymore and it goes away. So there's an easy little fix to your, to your pictures. <laughs> All right, so we've gone over quite a bit this evening. The last thing I'd like to share is just remembering how to save your document, how to set permissions. Um, you have the same permission properties you would in Word and Excel and Access and all of the other Microsoft Office products. Over on the right-hand side, found under File, you can select Show All Properties. And don't forget to go ahead and put in there maybe um, you know, some tags or comments that you have about your presentation. You can add status, category, subject. Make sure your name is the author of your presentation, very important. 
And then in the mid section here, you can set permissions. You can protect it. You can encrypt it with a password if you want. You can also prepare it for sharing. You can inspect it to make sure that uh, there are no errors if you're going to go online with this. And then finally, if you choose Save As, you don't have to save this as a PowerPoint presentation. You could save it as a PDF file. That way your students would be able to download it much quicker and uh, they'd be able to maybe print it or read it on their iPads as well. So I would encourage you to think about saving things in a PDF format. Remember, the hyperlinks that you create in the PowerPoint will also work in the PDF view. So they'll be able to, to have all the interactivity that you create through a PDF if you save it as that. Notice you can also save it as a template. We've talked about templates in former trainings that we've had. Uh, so there are many different options to save and keep that in mind when you're saving this for your students. Um, we do have the design tab and since we have five minutes or I guess four minutes left, let me share with you a little bit about the design tab. Uh, the design tab is the overall theme that you'll find in your presentation and as you select these it will go ahead and modify your slide for you depending on what you choose from. I would encourage you to make your own uh, designs. They're very easy to do. You can make them in the master view. You can go in and uh, paste your own graphics and your colors that you'd like. And if you don't feel too creative, you can always go down to the bottom and click uh, Browse for Themes and you can look at themes online. There are several themes that you can find on Microsoft.com. In fact, there are several templates that you can get on Microsoft.com that have already been done. And once this pulls up, I'll give you an example of where you can find these at. If you haven't gone to Microsoft Office online to find templates, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, there are millions and millions of templates you can use on Microsoft. You know, why reinvent it if there's something out there that's been done? You can click on, excuse me, you can click on Downloads. And then under Office, there's an item called Templates. And if you select templates, it'll take you to an area where you can select what application you want to download templates from. So you can select PowerPoint. And then they have some PowerPoint templates here on the home page that have been done. Uh, if you want to look at these, these are more of the recent ones that are available. You can. Or there's categories down here as well. You can also just do a search. There's a search box at the top, so since mine was science, I'm going to do a quick search for science, and you'll see all of the different science themes that come up. Uh, a lot of medical health presentations, um, templates that are up here. So I'm just going to choose a random science option here. Most of these are medical, actually, so without getting too much into it. I'll just choose a medical one for, for quickness. So if this is the one I wanted to use, I would just select Download. And if you haven't downloaded a, a PowerPoint template before, you'll have to accept the Microsoft agreement. And once you accept it, you just select Download and open it up. And it will open right into Microsoft PowerPoint for you. And uh, if you've got a really nice, colorful design and you're ready to go, start building your PowerPoint presentation. And this design is, hasn't been used a lot. Your students probably haven't seen it. It doesn't have that look and feel like a PowerPoint. It's actually a really clean, professional look to it. So I encourage you to check out Microsoft.com if you haven't already. There's tons and tons of templates available, um, millions of templates available. And if you create a creative template, you can actually upload it to Microsoft and share it, too. It'll show you how many times people have downloaded it, which is kind of fun to do. Um, yeah, so check out the, the template store and see if there's something that you can use. And you can do that same thing for Word and Excel. There's many, many different styles of templates that are available to you. All right, we have about 10 minutes left, and I'll use this time for any questions that anybody has. Anybody have any questions? I don't uh, 
have any questions right now. Great, great. I hope I was able to share uh, some information for you. I appreciate you attending the training and let me know if you have any further questions about PowerPoint.